Well, hello and happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to another great day of the Biblically Centered Kids podcast. My name is Mr. Johnny, and we're going to have some fun and learn a little bit on today's episode. Today is May 1st, 2024. Can you believe it's already May 1st? May, as in the fifth month of 2024. Crazy. Any of you guys out there have any May birthdays? If so, we want to celebrate them. Have your parents send us your name and your birthday to info at biblicallycentered.com so we can give you a proper birthday shout out on a future episode. And we've got another tail wagon holiday to celebrate today. Of course, we love all dogs here at Biblically Centered. But today we are specifically celebrating purebred dogs because today is National Purebred Dog Day. This holiday honors the diversity and history of purebred dogs. Every breed in existence has its purpose. Some are bred for hunting game and guarding homes. Others are more so for companionship or herding cattle, maybe even emergency rescue. It's hard to imagine what the world would look like without our adorable four-legged friends. There's over 900 million dogs around the world today. There are service dogs, canine officers, military working dogs, and of course, just our pets. So on National Purebred Dog Day, we celebrate purpose-bred pooches and the unique role that they've played in helping humans throughout history. So maybe what are some ways you can celebrate today if you choose? You could always spoil your pooch. Maybe give them some of their favorite treats. Take them to the groomer. Get them a new toy. (laughs) Maybe take them for that leisurely walk instead of one where you're just kind of rushing against time. Or you could even talk to your parents about maybe thinking about donating to a purebred rescue organization. You know, there are many organizations out there that help rescue dogs that are in tough situations. Donations to purebred rescue organizations can help pay for food, medicine, and even help fund treatment. They also can help find homes for these dogs. All right, well, do you kiddos remember what our virtue is for this week? That's right. This week is Virtue R, which says... We reflect Christ's example by how we love one another. All right, let's try to really commit this to memory. So repeat after me. I'll say we, and then right after you say we. Okay, and then we'll go through the whole virtue. Are you ready? We reflect Christ's example by... How we love one another. All right, let's do it again. We reflect Christ's example by how we love one another. Now let's say it all together. Are you ready? We reflect Christ's example by how we love one another. Okay, one more time. We reflect Christ's example by how we love one another. Awesome. Great, great job, kiddos. This is a very important one. You know, believe it or not, the scripture talks about ways the world's going to know that we are followers of Christ, and it has nothing to do with your Lego collection, your toys, your house, the type of car your family has, how well manicured your lawn is, sorry to call out the dads, how cool your haircut is, or if you wear, you know, Christian t-shirts all the time, or how much you attend your church, or if your pastor knows you on a first name basis so on and so forth. 
In John 13, 35, Jesus is talking and says, By this, everyone will know you are my disciples. If you, what? Anyone know? He says the world will know we are his disciples if we love one another. Now, I'm not saying having nice things or having things you genuinely care about is a bad thing. But what I am saying is that our purest witness to the world is how we love each other. Now, we know the love of Christ is a supernatural love, a divine love. It's a love that streams to us from the heart of God, because as we know, God is love. Jesus was about to demonstrate how deep that love was for all who receive him as their redeeming sacrifice for our sins. For greater love has none other than this, that the man, Christ Jesus, God in human form, would lay down his life for his friends. And so, he gave us a new commandment, a commandment that sums up the perfect law of God in one simple act. Love one another as I have loved you. And in so doing, we perfectly fulfill the requirements of God's law and the will of God's heart for all of his children. For what is impossible for man is possible with God. And when we live our life in spirit, in truth, and in submission to the Holy Spirit, the life of Christ lives in us and the love of Christ streams from us. And God is glorified by this. And now there is a legit reason that we are called to live godly in Christ Jesus, to walk in spirit and truth, to submit to teaching and training of the Holy Spirit, and to learn through obedience, to love one another as Christ loved us. For by all this, this all people will know that you are my disciples. disciples. A disciple is one that learns from Christ. Did you know that early in his ministry, Christ said, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. So then that at the end of his life, he could give a new commandment that we love others as he loved us. When, in the power of the Holy Spirit, Christians put to death the desires that maybe want us to do the wrong things or just those things that don't honor God, you know, those things of the world the pride that our life can bring, but instead we choose to walk in newness of life. We walk in love. Only as we allow Christ to live in us will his love then stream through us so that by this other people will know that we are disciples of Christ, that we are learning to become more and more like Christ each day. Do you remember several, several weeks ago when we talked about trees and fruit? What is your favorite fruit, by the way? Now, can an apple tree randomly start popping up with oranges? No, of course not. And why? Well, because it's not an orange tree. It's an apple tree. And so similarly to us, whenever we are transformed by Christ, the fruit of our life is love it isn't something we have to fake it's not something we have to manufacture but it's the very product of living a life with christ this is why we teach it's so important to spend daily time learning from the scripture and praying so we can listen to what god is saying to us oftentimes if we find ourselves in a cycle of bad attitudes or poor choices it might be a warning light telling us hey it's time to pray. So, let's say this week's virtue one more time. Are you ready? We reflect Christ's example by how we love one another. Great job. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, I want to learn from you, to know you more, and to love you better, to walk in spirit and truth, to grow in grace and in knowledge of my Savior Jesus. I want to love others as you love me. Let my life be a true testimony to the world that I am your child, your friend, your servant, and your disciple, so that my life may bring honor to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Well, thank you, kiddo, so much for listening to this episode here on the first day of May. Hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday reflecting God's love to the world around you. And remember that tomorrow is New Testament Thursday. So be sure to tune in each day to the Biblically Centered Kids podcast. And if you enjoy these episodes, please have your parents subscribe to our channel and leave a review. It's very helpful to help have this podcast pop up on more people's podcast services. And also, have your parents visit biblicallycenter.com to get some free resources and downloads that go along each week with our virtue. Sound good? All right, guys. Until next time.